Inflation in the U.S. rose slightly in July to 3.2 percent, up from June's 3 percent. That's less than what most expected. So it could support the case for the Fed to keep rates steady in September. Karina Mitchell has this from New York. There was a lot going on underneath the surface of this report, but it didn't come as a surprise. It is exactly in line with expectations and what analysts thought. We did know energy prices were growing up. And then last week, Phil, you and I actually talked about gas prices climbing and how it might impact the CPI print. Well, it did. Month over month, it climbed by two-tenths of a percent to, as you say, 3.2 percent was the headline number. That is the first increase in 13 months, so that is notable. Now, let's look at core CPI, which is the Fed's preferred gauge of measuring inflation. That actually did edge lower. It came in at 4.7 percent compared to 4.8 percent the month before. So heading in the right direction. But I do want to look at the blueprint of this report because there was a lot of mixed data in it. And I want to start with shelter costs. That actually climbed by four tenths of a percent. It was the biggest contributor to the gains, accounting for 90 percent. So if we stripped out that information, then the inflation number would actually look a lot better. But unfortunately, we all need this thing called a roof over our head, so not possible to do that. Energy also ticked higher. Food was also up. On the flip side, used cars did see an improvement down by 1.3 percent, and apparel was flat. So overall, as I say, mixed data, and it puts us in what I call this no man's land. We are seeing inflation trickle down, but at a painfully slow pace. Now, let's consider energy. If that continues to climb, well, it affects every business on every level, whether it's on the production side, manufacturing, transport, supply. That increases its costs, and at some point, it does pass on those costs to the consumer. Let's look at the housing market now as well. We've seen the bottom there, prices starting to climb on really tight supply. But again, what are you going to do? You need a roof over your head. So if these two things continue to accelerate, look for inflation to start heading in the other direction. I spoke to one analyst about what the data looked like today. Listen to what he had to say. Improvement on the inflation readings is not going to be a straight line. The, the easy part is behind us. Uh, we saw gas prices go from $5 a gallon to $3 a gallon. That really drove a lot of that, a lot of that improvement we saw from 9.1% down to 3%. But now it just becomes tougher sledding. This is this is where it's it's going to be a little bit of a bumpy road. So you heard him say it there. Look for turbulence ahead. Buckle up. That is what we're going to see in the next few months. And he particularly said, look out for those energy prices and housing, which tends to lag the data. Karina Mitchell uh, reporting there. U.S. weekly jobless claims rose more than expected uh, to a one-month high. 248,000 first-time unemployment benefit claims were filed last week. Now, that's still historically low, but Wall Street was concerned uh, that the higher claims could signal weakness for the economy. Continuing claims fell to 1.68 million, which was below expectations. And for more on how the stocks reacted, uh, John Terrett has this from the New York Stock Exchange. The big story of the day on Wall Street was early in the morning at 8.30 when the release of the CPI figure, the Consumer Price Index, for the month of July came out. This is what Americans pay more each month and each year in terms of inflation. And at the end of the day, the economists pretty much got it right. They, it came in bang in line with expectations, with CPI, the headline rate, at 3.2 percent, down from 9.1 percent in June of 2022. But the core inflation rate, where you strip out food and energy, is still far too high at 4.7 percent. And both of those indices were up just a little bit in the month of July. And that's the first time that inflation has actually gone up for, well, over 12 months. So a lot to digest and something in those figures for really everybody. So what did the markets do? They took off on the initial blush because the Dow was up 455 points but couldn't hang on to that. It closed up 1 15th of 1%, 52 points. The Nasdaq was up 1 12th of 1%, 15 points. The S&P 500 was flat, up just one point at 44.68. And of course, it leaves very open now the question of what the central bank will do regarding interest rates when it meets again in the middle of September. You can read whatever you want to into that CPI figure, really. Most people here think there will be a pause. Now, later on Friday, the University of Michigan will give us their latest sentiment survey. It's another key plank in what the Federal Reserve looks at 
when it comes to making that decision. And before it makes that decision, it will have two more key pieces of data. Another CPI, this time for the month of August, and another jobs report. And both of those will come in September ahead of the Federal Reserve meeting. John Terrence, CGTN on the trading floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, for more on this uh, and the U.S. economy, Ted Rossman joins us, senior industry analyst, bankrate.com and creditcards.com. Uh, Good to see you again. You know, if I had talked to you a few weeks ago and these were the numbers that were shown, which were pretty much in line with expectations, arguably slightly better, you would think that we'd whip out the celebration and the balloons and everything, and we didn't really get that today. It almost felt like the as-expected numbers they already are now talking about next month. What's going on? Yeah, it's always about the next thing, right? It did feel early in the day today that there was a celebratory mood on Wall Street. And then in the afternoon, it felt like stocks really declined a bit and closed the day up a little bit, but well off their session highs. And I think some of that was the jobs data you were just talking about that I think as investors digested that, maybe a little bit of nerves about the job market, maybe also a, a deeper dive into the inflation data, uh, maybe wasn't quite as great as initially perceived. But yeah, it was interesting how there was a big pop early in the day and then closed the day just slightly better than flat. Well, I'll, I'll run my theory by you because let's just say that inflation is, is within expectations. So the Fed doesn't increase rates, which was pretty much priced in, which we all expected. So now we're in this no man's land um, Chairman Powell's already said, well, he's not cutting rates anytime soon. He's said that numerous times. So we're stuck in this rate stay at this level for a while. And I think investors are scratching their heads thinking, well, wait a minute. Well, what does that mean? And so now we're just starting to think about, well, these higher level of rates, the impact that it might have on the economy. And I, I'm, I'm sort of throwing it out there, but maybe that's part of the reason why we're not seeing the celebratory reaction, but maybe more of a what if and what happens now. It's an interesting theory. Yeah, we know that Wall Street doesn't like uncertainty. And of course, there's always going to be some level of uncertainty. But um, yeah, it is kind of a mixed bag right now. The whole economy feels like sort of a mixed bag. Investors' best guess seems to be that rates more or less stand pat until next spring. That's when they start pricing in rate cuts. I mean, who knows? A lot could change between now and then. Um, I feel like a lot of the economic data is more than hanging in there. I feel like it's actually been quite solid. Lately, I'm intrigued by that Atlanta Fed GDP Now projection that maybe has this quarter's GDP as high as about 4%. We'll see. I mean, that's well ahead yeah. of the blue chip consensus estimates. Um, but that's reflective of some of the strong data lately. I think there was an important point in that piece, too, about gas prices and the fact that they've started to tick up, up about 8% over the past month. That's the kind of thing that, if that were to last, could have some ripple effects on consumer spending and also on other industries that rely on transportation. Right. I mean, but things are never going to be perfect, right? I mean, used car prices drops. Uh, heck, eggs drops. And that was one complaint a lot of people had. I mean, there was a number of areas that saw significant drops. And if you strip out the whole housing thing, Actually, inflation was either flat or, or down, you could, even, you could even argue. So there's never going to be a perfect scenario. And then let me ask you this. Does the Fed care? I mean, I know they do, but how much do they care about, say, consumer, uh, cons consumer sentiment numbers, the, the Michigan numbers that we're waiting for? If, if it's better or worse, does the Fed take that into consideration? I think, you know, I'm sure it's something they look at along with so many other data points, but I think they're probably more concerned with actual you know, hard data on spending and inflation and jobs. And you know, I think an interesting disconnect we've seen with the consumer sentiment numbers really for the past couple of years is that sentiment has been a lot worse than the actual numbers. I mean, you would think based on some of these sentiment numbers that, you know, we would have had a, a nasty recession at some point just because they've been so far below a lot of the historical norms. Um, but the truth is that despite high inflation, a lot of people are doing pretty well. Now, are there starting to be some cracks in the foundation? I mean, we start to see credit card delinquencies go up. But to every point right now, there's a counterpoint. You know, you could say that, well, yes, delinquencies are up a little bit. But in the context of things, they're actually still pretty low. And they're really only back to 2019 levels, which wasn't so bad. And they were right. really unusual well, in the I mean, past couple of Ted. years. So 
it, it's those contradictions. It doesn't help that people come on TV and yell and scream recession, 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 and how terrible things are, when in fact things, as you said, are sort of at minimum okay, if not good. And I would highlight the jobs data that we have. I mean, look at the unemployment rate. If I told you that we would raise rates uh, 5% from where they were a year and a half ago, and the jobless rate would re remain where it is now, I mean, I think that in itself is a shocking number. It is, yeah. And I think, you know, I don't think the Fed would ever come out and say this, but I think quietly they realize that there does need to be at least a little bit of pain in the job market. I mean, we don't want people to suffer and lose jobs, but let's face it. I mean, I don't think it's really sustainable and I don't think inflation can really come down meaningfully if there's still 1.6, 1.7 available jobs for everybody looking for work. Um, wage growth all of a sudden is outpacing inflation by a decent margin. That's great for us workers, but again, probably not what the Fed wants yeah. to see. So, you know, if you do start to see weekly jobless claims tick up a little bit, I mean, they, they certainly don't want them to go up a lot, but a tightening of the labor market is actually what the Fed wants I, here. I, I'll tell you what, I think the Fed is secretly celebrating somewhere because inflation's at 3% and sort of trending in the right direction. I know it's not at two, but you know what? It's pretty darn close. Ted, good to see you, my friend. Thanks for having me.